Welcome to episode 49 of Published. Today I'll speak with Katrina Brooks, the owner of the independent bookstore Black Pearl Books. We're chatting about all things indie bookstores and how authors can best approach an indie store when they're looking for places to distribute their book. Welcome to Published, a podcast by Greenleaf Book Group, where we'll discuss the ins and outs of the publishing industry, from writing a book and finding the right publisher, to gearing up for a book launch. And now, here's your host, Greenleaf Book Group CEO, Tanya Hall. Welcome back to Published. In this episode, we'll explore the world of independent bookstores and how this past year of COVID has affected the industry. As a Black-owned independent bookstore, Katrina will give us insight into how Black Pearl Books operates when it comes to independent authors and their books. She'll discuss the do's and don'ts of pitching an indie store and what she looks for when considering stocking a new title on her shelves. Let's get into the interview. Hi, Katrina, welcome to Published. Could you maybe start off by telling us a bit about your background and what you do? Sure. I am a bookstore owner. I own um, Black Pearl Books in Austin, Texas, and I've had, I started in 2019. Previous to that, I have a background in um, corporate and consulting with marketing and PR, um, I have a bachelor's from Clark Atlanta University, which is an HBCU, and an MBA from UT Dallas. Well, that's a very impressive background. And what led you to open Black Pearl Books? You know, there were there wasn't just one. There there were many reasons. Um, first and foremost is probably just being a mother myself. I have two children, and as they are, you know, as as I'm raising them, they are. 12 and 14. And, but I remember when they were younger, um, it was difficult to find books that with people that look like them, you know, representation. And so that was always just important to me as a mother. Um, Second piece of that is still goes back to my children as they are in school and they are, would learn American history. There was so much of the story that was left out. And so we always, within our household, we always had to use supplementary um, information, most of the time books, that gave the other parts of the history that are, are left out in our history books. And it's so unfortunate, but, you know, that, that's, that's the reality of it. And so... Um, So so that was a big piece of it. I think thirdly, it's, you know, one of the things that I realize as they become become older is while we've always pushed books and reading and education within our family, I know that's not the case for everyone. And there's just lot there's a lack of access to books and to information and not even um, not even from an economically disadvantaged standpoint, but there are, you know, communities that don't know that these stories of representation exist. They don't know about these black and brown authors. And so, so it's not just when I say um, people having access to books, you know, it's not like a, it's not a, a money issue, I guess, or certain communities. It's, it's people just don't know people don't know that these books exist, that these stories exist. And so, you know, one of my, one of my reasons, I guess, after all of that was, I need to share these stories. I need to share people's stories. These, they're out here and representation is so important. And seeing yourself, you know, being able to um, connect with something or someone that sounds like you, looks like you. And even furthermore, for other people to see that, because I think one of the things that it does teach is empathy. And so while you may have never experienced a certain situation and never will, because, you know, because you don't, it's not your lifestyle or you're, you know, you're not a person of color or for whatever the reasons are, um, you're able to learn about these experiences through literature. And there's so much out there and so many stories to share and so many stories to be told that it, for me, it was just kind of a natural progression of of all these things that's, you know, just led me to say, look, I, this is needed. This is really needed right now. And so 
um, yeah, that's, that was, that was the, the cultivation of it, I guess, in, in so many words, you know, and, and then the end of the day, I guess it was, I look at, I, I have to really think about it because the, the short answer for me, it was, is just, it was an idea. It was an idea. I'm an entrepreneur and, and I just acted on an idea, you know, <laughs> but there was a lot of things that led me to that idea. And I think that's the, you know, that's the um, significance behind it. So. That's great. You've felt a need and you filled it. Yeah. 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 Nice. Okay. So you are in the book selling business, obviously, mm -hmm. and physical bookstores were certainly hit hard by the pandemic, but you have a slightly different business model. Can you tell us about that and how COVID-19 impacted you? Sure. When I first launched the business, um, the idea was take the books to the people. And so while we always had plans on having a physical space to start, it was, hey, let's do pop-up shops. Let's, you know, get out in the community, um, connect with people. And so that was going along, along pretty smoothly. And then obviously the pandemic hit, which shut everything down. And so um, we had to quickly pivot. Luckily, we already had an online store, a platform. And so we were able to utilize that to continue sales. And, um, and then really, you know, I don't know that it's so much of what I did as much as, you know, in June of 2020, when death of George Floyd and um, the push for supporting black owned businesses, like that just really came through for us. And, you know, having that online platform established already was beneficial. And so we just saw our sales, you know, grow tremendously during that time. So much so that the month of July, we actually had to shut our website down because we, as a small business, like we physically could not accept any more orders. We're like, we can't do it, we, you know? And so really words can't even describe yeah. like that experience, you know? And, um, and then we opened back up in August and sales continued, you know? And then luckily in November, we were presented with, well, previous to that, we were presented with an opportunity, but in November, we actually opened a storefront um, in Central Austin. And so we were able to partner with a nonprofit organization and sublease some space from them. And so it was really a win-win for us as a small business to be in a location that we normally otherwise would not be um, able to afford to be in, you know, because the, the rent spaces are so high. Um, but then also to profit, to um, partner with a nonprofit and it, it helps them out because obviously they were impacted as a retail store. They were impacted by COVID as well, you know, so their sales were down and so forth. So, um, so that's kind of where we've been since November and yeah, it's been working out so far so good. Sounds like kind of a wild ride that turned out all for yes. good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, great to hear. Now, yes. your, your founding principle, I love this, is love others as I have loved you. And mm -hmm. I think that's so fascinating. I'm wondering if you can give us the quote unquote origin story of that principle. Sure. Well, it's a biblical principle. Um, and, you know, for me, it's starting the business, starting a bookstore and focusing on diversity, inclusion, representation. Um, I, th I think that, well, two things. First of all, my faith tells me that, you know, that's the greatest commandment. It's to love one another. That's it. And so um, just in general, trying to approach life from that lens, you know, and then having a space that is about inclusivity. Um, I think, you know, you're going to come in contact with people from different religions, different backgrounds, different political preferences, different lifestyle preferences, you know, and I personally may or may not agree, you know, but I think if I'm coming from the place of, of love, then there's no judgment there. And that allows for open, honest conversations to happen, you know, because truly, I mean, our mission is to, it's to learn, to be a resource, to learn and to grow, 
you know, and through literature, yes, but then through that conversations need to happen in order for growth to happen. So, um, so that's, I mean, that's, I guess the, the gist of it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And how did the name Black Pearl Books come about? Well, um, I guess, you know, it, it, I, I kind of had a list of names that I was going through and things that I liked, but Black Pearl stood out for me because it's a rare gem. It represents independence, strength, wisdom, wealth, prosperity, hope, and most importantly, it actually um, is often associated with everlasting love. And then that goes back into our our principle that we just talked about is you know loving one another. Um, and so to be a symbolization of that, it, you know, that, that carries a lot of weight. Um, also, you know, if you're a person that believes in, a lot of people think that gems have healing powers and so will, or stones, you know, and so um, if you were to do research on that, you would also find out that black pearls um, often are associated with healing properties and like healing hurt feelings and um, removing negative energy and, for me, it, it all ties in together, like the the energy of, um, you know, when you talk about racism, anti-racism, dealing with those hard topics, you know, that were so prevalent over the summer, but even still so much so now, um, just remove, you know, just getting rid of that negative energy and, and allowing that healing to happen. And so it was very much representative of all of that, (laughs) you know? Um, So that was, that's kind of what the, what I settled on and that's what it's been. And yeah. Well, it held true to its name, weathering (laughs) some difficult times. So it was well chosen. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. So as a uh, bookstore owner, obviously mm-hmm. you're the person that authors look to as having the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do you decide which books that you will bring into the bookstore? What are you looking for? So I think um, for me, it's two things. It's how, what do I think about the book personally and how well will, will it sell? I mean, you, we all know word of mouth is the best communication, the best way to spread the word. And so if a customer walks into my store and this is a, a book I believe in, or I think the illustrations are greater or whatever the reason is, it's very easy for me to speak to it and to push it and to say, Hey, you should really check this out. You know? So I think it's for me personally, it's as simple as that. You pick a product, you know, you wouldn't promote something that you didn't believe in. And so it's, it's, it's just that it's believing in the product, um, the title, the book, what is it about, you know? And then by virtue of that, if I'm able to speak to it and, and talk to customers about it and recommend it, then typically it'll sell. They like finding indie authors or titles that they weren't familiar with or, or would have never known about, you know? So, um, I think that's, for me, it's as simple as that. Hmm. And do you welcome authors reaching out to you directly to pitch their books? And if so, how should they do that? Um, that's a tricky one. So. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so I will tell you, we get, and I, this is probably on the conservative side, we get anywhere from 15 to 20 indie author inquiries a week. Um, I would say, three, yeah, again, conservative three a day, three to, you know, maybe three to five um, a day. And so it's really difficult for one, you know, obviously we're, we're a small business, a small operation. So we don't have the manpower to scour through all of those inquiries, you know? Um, And so it's, it's generally like a quick look. Is this something that catches our eye or our attention? Many times what honestly will happen is, so to, I guess to stay, take a step back, yes, people can reach out. The best way is to send an email, but just understand that there are many emails coming through, so, you know, and so um, we may not be able to get to everyone. We may not respond we need to everyone, but if it's something that piques our interest, then certainly we will, you know, 
Um, and if, and sometimes what will happen is it got, it gets pushed to the side. And then when we have an event or are looking, you know, to, to plan something, I'll kind of, I'll go back through them and say, okay, who are, you know, I'm looking for a children's author. I'm looking for a local author that has a Hispanic American title or, or something, right. Something very specific. And so I'll end up going back through them. So even if you may not hear right away, if at some point it's a fit, then you will hear from us, you know? Great. And just out of curiosity, do you bring those in through a wholesaler or do you work directly with authors, maybe on a consignment basis? So most of the time I work directly with authors. For the indie authors, I work directly with them. Um, Sometimes their books are available. I guess it depends on how it's published. You know, sometimes the books are available through our distributor. Many times if it's self-published, they are not. Um, And so I typically will work directly with the author and it's, you know, they typically get a higher percentage of that, of those dollars back by doing so also. Mm -hmm. Um, Was there a second part to that? I'm sorry. (laughs) No, 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 you got it. I was just curious (laughs) if you, um, if some booksellers refuse to work directly with authors and they insist that it be available through wholesale. So I was curious Mm. how you manage that. Yeah, no, we, I actually like working directly with, with authors because <laughs> then I, you know, you kind of get the backstory of it. It's more personal, you know, um, what led them to be an author, what led them to write this story if, or if it's a children's book or, you know, whatever that is. And so I actually like working directly with the authors, but you're right. Some, some stores do require that it be, you know, through available through the distributor. Yeah. And do you have any advice for authors who are hoping to establish strong relationships with indie bookstores? I think indie authors are seeking this sort of uh, sisterhood, if you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with mm-hmm. Indie bookstores, it seems like it should be a natural fit, but it's like you said, for administrative reasons, it can be yeah. a little difficult just the sheer volume that you're managing. So how, yeah. can, how can they get an in with the indie bookstores? So I would say start with your local bookstores first and foremost, um, because that's where you're going to be able to cultivate those relationships and, you know, email, I mean, email and say, Hey, I'm I'm local. I'd like to stop by. Is there a good time? And then just drop by the store, you know, um, take a couple of copies of your book. I, I think it's, we've had that happen. And pretty much every time, like if, if I have an indie author, they come in, they say, here, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of copies, see how it does. I would say four out of five times that book sells and I call them and say, Hey, I, I want to order some more, you know? Um, and, and so, yeah, you're, you're maybe giving up a little bit at, on the front end, but if that's the thing that sparks that relationship, you know, and, and starts to, to build that trust, um, because I think there's a give and take there, right? It can't just be about, hey, sell my book. <laughs> you know, it's like stop in the store, see what, what they're about, buy something from the indie bookstore, you know, show that you're supporting them as well. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you've left a couple of copies, check back, check back in a month or something and say, hey, I'm just wondering if if the copy sold, if, you know, if the title sold, if you're interested in purchasing more, if there's anything I can do to enhance it. Like I know I have, I have one indie author, um, her book was coming out and, and she's like, well, I want to include stickers. I want to give you some stickers to give out with the book. I have another who has a stickers and a poster, you know, so any extra little giveaways or anything that can be included that as a bookseller, we can speak to that. You know, what, what kind of makes this different than another indie author's title, you know, that may be local also, right? Um, but any, any other little pieces like that, um, I think are, are really helpful. But yeah, I would just say start local, start local, start cultivating that relationship, show, um, you know, show support for that bookstore and go from there. Yeah, I think that's great advice to make sure that you're making this support mutual before you mm-hmm. <laughs> come in too hard with an ask. So Right. <laughs> I think that's that's almost probably number one because uh-huh. you're asking, you know, you're asking for something, but if you're not willing to support that store also, then it, you know, it's like there there are a lot of people asking for the same thing. 
you know? Um, so yes. <laughs> Great advice. Well, you've been so generous with your time and it's been fascinating to hear about your evolution for Black Pearl Books. And where, out of curiosity, in case you want to give people a URL, what, where can they visit you online? Sure. Blackpearlbookstore.com is where Perfect. you can find us. And any parting advice for those listening to us today? Um, I would just say do your research. You know, most indie bookstores have um, a specific niche. And so if you are if you are trying to get your book into a store, just do your research, make sure it pairs well with the titles or, you know, with their mission and the things that they are currently selling in their store. And then I would say, follow their process. Every indie bookstore has a different, there, there's no tried and true necessarily. There's no one way, you know, because, because we are indie, <laughs> because we are small, you know, we, each one just kind of does whatever the process is that works for them. And so for some, it'll be go to their website and fill out a form and we'll be in touch with you for others. It'll be yes. Email us for other, you know, so I would just say, do your research follow whatever their process is because like I said, just like I'm, I'm personally get a lot. I'm sure other indie stores you know, get a lot of inquiries as well. And I think lastly, if you are venturing out and you know that, you know, this bookstore pairs really well with the book that I'm, that I have, if you know someone in that um, community or in that city send them a couple of copies of the book and ask them to hand deliver them. You know, we've had that happen in our store where a gentleman, you know, published a book, self-published a book. He doesn't live in Austin, but he knows someone that does. And so he sent copies to the person that he knows. She brought them in with a little a personal note from him and said, hey, he asked me to bring these in. And we ended up ordering copies of his, his title we would have never otherwise have known about it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just think, um, do your research and then just get creative with it. You know, how can you, how can you reach these, the booksellers that you are, that you've targeted now that you kind of have a short list of, I want to be in these stores. Now what's the best way to reach them, you know? And so that personal connection, if, if you have one, if you know someone in that city, um, I think that's a great way to start. There's nothing like a warm lead to close the deal. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Katrina, thank you again for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's it for our episode today with Katrina. We hope you enjoyed learning about how to get your book into independent bookstores. For notes and resources from today's show, go to greenleafbookgroup.com slash episode 49. You can also find advice for writing, publishing, and promoting your work in my book, Ideas, Influence, and Income, which you can learn more about at ideasinfluenceandincome.com. If you've enjoyed the show, please rate and review us. It makes a big difference to have your feedback and helps us make sure we're answering your publishing questions. A big thank you to Eleanor Fishborn, who produces the published podcast. We'll be back next month with another new episode. Thanks for listening to Published. To learn more, please visit greenleafbookgroup.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.